Great. So one of the things that makes Malaysia a great startup location is our people, right? Right? Yeah, definitely. So today, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what we're doing in the people development space. So at MDEC, we have a big focus around wanting to ensure that we have a solid pipeline of future tech talents, right? to work with all you exciting companies. And we do this through an initiative called the My Digital Maker Movement, which over the last three years has gone out and touched more than 700,000 students across the country, getting these kids to work on their digital maker projects, coding, robotics, AI, and so on. Now, in this process, we've actually uncovered hundreds of outstanding young digital makers. We call them our digital ninjas. <laughs> now, in the house today, thanks to Patrick and the Wild Digital team, we have 45 of these ninjas in the house. And so, ninjas, can you say hello to everyone? There we go, those are our ninjas. And I'm sure that you want to get up close to with them, right? Uh, but you know, we don't, we don't have time to bring all 45 of them up. So I'm going to get one of them, right? And he is a very special 14-year-old. So I want you to help me welcome this young man. His name is Arif Amir Ali. Hi. Hey, Arif. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. So this is Arif, everyone, right? So Arif, can you, tell, can you tell us how long you've been a ninja? So I've been a ninja for two years, starting from last year. And it's been an in interesting journey because it ex has exposed me to many things. Really? Like yeah. what? Uh, to sustainable development goals, to design thinking, to how to pitch, how to create a project that actually works and how you can cater to certain people. Yeah, so that's a picture of Arif with his cohort of ninjas last year. So Arif, can you tell us, how did you get interested? Because um, I know that you participate in lots of IEEE, okay, IEEE, this is serious stuff. IEEE competitions, you know, coming up with your own tech projects, right? How did you get interested in tech? So when I was standard four, which for all of you who, who you do not know, when I was 10 years old, there, were a, there was a robotic camp. So uh, I got interested there because my mom signed me up. And uh, over the few months, I got interested in robotics. And then by the end of the year, I went into a robotic competition in Hong Kong, and we won third place. OK, great. Yeah. And then, um, and, then, and then what happened? So do you remember how we met? Yeah, I still remember it. It's clear. It was just like uh, it happened yesterday. So <laughs> it didn't happen yesterday. <laughs> you said you've been a ninja two years, right? Yes. Okay, so how did so, we So uh, I first met this whole just the ninja, just the maker thing. It was when I was uh, 12 years old. It was by the end of the year. I have participated uh, in a few competitions and a company decided to bring me to uh, present the, my, all my projects at the Digital Maker Fair. So when I was presenting, uh, people from MDEC saw me and uh, the ex-CEO of MDEC saw me and that's how I got to know the whole thing. And suddenly, by the end of the year, I was invited to present to, in front of Prince Charles when, the, uh, when he came uh, during 2017. And that's how I met Puan Azura and how I knew the whole Little Ninja thing. And when I was uh, in Form 1, I entered it. Okay, great. So yeah, so that's a picture of Arif that you see on the top, top left. Top, yeah, top left. And it's at our first My Digital Maker Fair. It was held in KLCC. And so Arif and his mom were there 
and you know they had all his certificates and all his projects. He's holding a gold medal, I think, in one of the IEEE competitions in that picture. And so his mom, you know, pulled us aside and said, "You have to meet my son. He's super talented." And so you know, the rest is history. We got him into our ninja ninja program. So 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 you know, your mom shared with with me that that book. Yeah. Right? And she said it's your favorite book. You want to tell us about that book? Yeah, so it's a book written by Stephen Hawking. It's called A Brief History of Time. So it's, uh, it, it's interesting and it becomes one of my favorites because it teaches you how the world works, what, what makes time tick, how, what makes the universe tick, and what is the universe in a whole concept. How old are you again? I'm 14. Okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I was asking those kind of questions. When did you read this book? How uh, old were you? Uh, I was 13. Okay. I, I read it last year. I finished it last year. Okay. So earlier, when we were preparing for the session, Arif was, you know, telling me about the book, and you said something about what was it? Black radiation? I don't know. No, Hawk what radiation? <laughs> Hawking radiation. Hawking radiation. Okay. So I have no idea what that is. And so you want to share a little bit about okay. why that is so interesting? So you can see in the uh, cover of the book, it says, from Big Bang to black holes. So one special thing about black holes, they eventually die, although you think it's already a corpse. So they over time decay, and that's Hawking radiation, which is theorized by Stephen Hawking, which states that over time, a uh, black hole will slowly radiate off and become nothing. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very deep. Right. Okay. So, so tell us, you know, what, what are some of the projects that you're working on? I think, you know, you, you mentioned something about saving fish or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you want to tell us I, about I that? have four projects. So, the first project was the first time we met, uh, which was a smart cutter grass a smart grass cutter with home security features. Okay, so I could day. use a smart grass cutter, definitely, <laughs> yeah. any day. So uh, in the morning, it cuts cuts your grass automatically, but at night, it helps you. It becomes a security dog in a way. Okay. So basically, it alerts you if there's any intruders. And after that, what I brought for during what I showed to Brian Charles was um, a anti-abuse device. So basically... Anti-abuse. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it uses your voice to detect whether or not you're shouting. So let's say if you're shouting, uh, it will trigger the transmitter module, which will send a message or a notification to the person in charge and saying that you're actually in danger, you're, you're being bullied. All right. And uh, my Just the Ninja project, was based on the Sustainable Development Goal number 13, which is climate action, which um, we made um, a fish sanctuary because in climate action, it also states because of glo global warming. So uh, because of global warming, it's increasing the temperature of the sea, which is also reducing the number of fish, and the pH level is because of pollution. So with those um, fluctuation conditions, it's become less and less known for fish to populate in certain regions. And because of overfishing uh, is another thing. So we created a fish farm which uh, breeds fish and releases them into the wild once uh, it is safe enough for them to go into the wild and repopulate the environment. Okay, all and right. And my last project yes. <laughs> is uh, called Project H2, which is an anti... Um, it's an anti-heat stroke device, so basically it detects your pulse and your temperature sensor and it has something to do with global warming. Although not directly to solve global warming, but one of the side effects, like heat stroke. So that's why my mom was I, uh, and I was talking um, and we came up with this idea and we thought it would be a great thing to do. So we created it and it somewhat worked. So. Right. And, and, you know, I mean, these are great projects and I think you have the qualities of being a serial entrepreneur, don't you think? Because there's like so many ideas out there, right? But, you know, you, you spoke about heat and, you know, back earlier when we were talking about it, you told me about different kinds of dehydration. What was it? Classical oh, yeah. and... Uh, yeah, uh, classical and exhaustional. Okay. So there's two types of heat strokes. There's exhaustional and classical. Classical is found in kids and adults, 
uh, not adults, old people. And exhaustional is for uh, sportsmen and okay. people who are usually active. But exhaustion is not as bad as classical because classical, it uh, develops over one week. So okay. it's much more dangerous because it affects a much more wider scope. And how do you learn all these things? Research. Through? Internet. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. So it's not something that you learn in school? No. Okay, good. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's amazing what you do. And don't you think it's just, you know, amazing? So, so tell me, right? If, if I were to say, I mean, there's so many smart people in the room who've got all these amazing technologies out there. Now, if you had the opportunity to have all these technologies in the world, what is that one big problem that you would solve? It's sustainable development goal number seven. Affordable, clean, renewable, modern uh, energy for all, which um, you can do that by nuclear fusion. And I'm really interested in that, like, because people are now starting to develop those ideas like Tokamak um, and Aita, which is still in process of building. And once that's finished, they'll be able to experiment with it. And that brings us to a future of a plethora of uh, possibilities. And with the energy, uh, energy produced, which is the same process how a sun makes, um, it allows us to do many things that was once uh, unavailable for us or out of reach. And it's clean and it only needs a tiny drop of water to start that fusion uh, process. Okay, so for those of you who have no idea what he's talking about, like me, <laughs> you can go and check it out because Arif told me about this website. It's ITER yeah, I yeah. and you'll learn all about infinite energy. Right? So these are the things that our kids are interested in these days, right? <laughs> so, excellent. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, give a big hand. There you have it. <laughs> our very own Malaysian Digital Ninja. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the future. Now, before I end the session, I want to give a huge shout out to our corporate and academia partners. And we have quite a few of them. And when, you know, these ninjas, we don't nurture and groom them ourselves. We have the help of lots of industry partners. And they come in, they provide internships to these students. When they finish their SPM, they go out and intern. They mentor them, give them all kinds of other guidance, you know, design thinking, all kinds of other knowledge. And, you know, we want to welcome more of you. We need the startups. We need innovative companies like you to come on board, join us as we take this incredible journey with our future tech heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, Arif. Okay.